Hey guys, it's Bro Uwak, and I've been ranking a lot of things in Overwatch. I've ranked gold guns, I've ranked maps, I've even ranked Overwatch hero skins. And while it wasn't a ranking video per se, last week I did the top 5 best Echo skins, basically rounding out my top 5 series. But I haven't done a top 5 or a ranking video looking at the best Echo ultimate copies. Echo's ultimate duplication is probably one of my favorites in Overwatch just because of how interesting, but how different it is every single game because of how depressing dependent it is on the enemy team. And while there might be some heroes that are a little bit more favorable to copy, it's also just dependent on what the situation calls for. Do you need a tank to be a lot more aggressive or do you need a DPS copied because they have a great ultimate but you don't want to pick them throughout the whole entire game. And that's why I want to rank every single Echo copies from worst to best because this might actually help some of you guys determine what heroes you should copy in the game. And when I rank the heroes for this list, I ask myself five questions that you should also ask yourself when you copy a hero does the ultimate generate fast is the ultimate good would you rather want the ultimate than the hero and you especially need to ask that for when you copy dps heroes and are there abilities to help you get the ultimate faster and finally can you get multiple ultimates but before i get into this list i want to ask you guys to comment down below what hero you love to copy as echo is it a tank because it calls for that more times than not in the situation or is it a hero like genji and doomfist where you just love to use their ultimate but finally, let's rank the best heroes to copy as Echo from worst to best. Now this might be a surprising hero to see at dead last because Sombra is actually a hero that answers yes to every single one of those questions that I mentioned before with the exception of abilities helping you get the ultimate faster. Her ultimate generates the second fastest in Overwatch. It's really good if not the best ultimate in the game and you sometimes would rather want EMP than just a Sombra because well you don't really like her DPS abilities possibly and you can even get a lot of ultimates in the same echo duplication. So why is Sombra one of the worst heroes? heroes to copy as Echo, it's all based on the situation that you're in. Because when you're looking to copy Sombra, where are you going to find her? She's going to be invisible by the time you're looking to copy her. See, that's why she's one of the worst. Now, yes, if she didn't have her invisibility ability, she would be top five easily because she has one of the best ultimates to get in the game. And as Echo, you get that pretty quickly. But because Sombra is Sombra, she's probably going to be invisible in your back line somewhere where you're probably not going to be hanging up as Echo because you're probably at the front line looking to copy the enemy team. And that's why Sombra is the worst hero to copy because you aren't gonna have the ability to copy her. Widowmaker at number 30 makes a little bit more sense as to why she's so low on the list, and it's just based on the idea that Widowmaker's ultimate is one of, if not the worst in the game. See, if you're playing Widowmaker, you're probably playing her not because she has an ultimate that allows you to see through walls. If that's the case, you can just simply use Hanzo's Sonic Air ability, or by hack. No, you're probably playing her because you have cracked aim. Plus, not to mention the fact that even if you do accomplish a Widowmaker copy, there's a moment where you stand still as Echo, and you have to charge up your Widowmaker shot, and the enemy Widowmaker sees you copying her, she's probably just gonna shoot you because you're standing still and don't have your Widow shot charged. Plus, even if you somehow kill the enemy Widowmaker, you're probably gonna be in the enemy back line because that's where the enemy Widowmaker is at. So, what are you gonna do? Shoot the enemy team from the back line? What? How many kills are you gonna get? One, two, three? If that's the case, why aren't you just playing Widowmaker to begin with, stupid? Mercy being the third worst hero to copy as Echo might seem like an interesting spot to put it at, but when you think about it logically, would you rather want Mercy's Moth Ultimate where it just basically gives your team more sustainability, or would you rather want a Junkrat Tower that basically grants you an insta-kill? Plus, even when you look at it in a more detailed look, you still have to achieve Mercy's Ultimate, which her ultimate generates pretty slow, and the way that you generate ultimate charge is by healing your team, which is very, very, very slow. You don't really have a lot of DPS opportunity and if you are being a DPS mercy why wouldn't you just copy a DPS hero to begin with
Lucio coming in at number 28 is based on one idea and one idea alone, and that is his ultimate is the longest to charge in Overwatch. Now, while yes, you do have your passive AoE heal and you still can get a lot of DPS with Lucio if you're good, the thing about it is that you're only gonna get one Lucio ult, and even if you get it at the very end, Lucio's temporary shield is gonna go away once your ultimate is done with Echo. And while Lucio's ult is really good to defend against Zarya's grab and to initiate team fights, the thing about Echo's copy is that you're initiating the team fight by using Echo's ultimate, not by using Lucio's ultimate. You gotta generate the ult charge still. So by that time, you're already in the team fight. Plus, if you're trying to defend against a Zarya grab, all the Zarya has to do is wait for your Lucio copy to finish so that she can get a safe grab. Now, Mora is kind of in a similar boat like Lucio, where she has the third slowest ultimate to generate. But even when you do generate Mora's ultimate, it's one of those lackluster ultimates that doesn't really do a lot. It doesn't instantly secure you a kill, or it doesn't instantly stun the enemy team. It's just a sustaining and somewhat damaging ultimate that's like, I'd rather copy someone like Zenyatta if we want someone to mass heal the team, or if we want to mass damage the team, just copy a D.Va or a Junkrat. So coming in next at 26 is Symmetra. Now this is an interesting one just based on the ultimate alone. So when you do achieve Symmetra's ultimate, it's a great ultimate, but the duration of the ult itself for Symmetra is probably gonna last the same exact duration as Echo. So you can't get multiple Symmetra shields, even if you wanted to. So while Symmetra's ultimate does fit that aggressive push style that Echo loves to play as when she does initiate the copy, you have to remember that you still have to play as Symmetra, and we all know Symmetra just isn't the most meta hero to play. Zenyatta is the next hero. Now, the main issue with copying Zenyatta is that his ultimate is great as a defensive ultimate. You use it when the soldier's ulting, or when the Zarya grabs, or when the Sigma's gonna plop you down on the ground. But like I mentioned with Lucio's ultimate, why would the enemy team use their grab or use their big CC ultimates when they know that you're gonna use your Zenyatta ult to counter it? And you might argue, well, Zenyatta has great DPS. Why wouldn't you just copy a DPS hero then? Our favorite cowboy in the whole Wild Wild West comes in at number 24. I mainly put him at this spot because his ultimate is its just not good, man. A lot of people use McCree's ultimate just so that they can reload faster. That's how bad it is. So if you're looking to copy McCree, more than likely you want to do so so that you can surprise the enemy team because unless they have a D.Va or unless they have a Rhino to shield you, yeah, you can get great mass kills. But then you're also a sitting duck as McCree. There's just better heroes to copy than McCree. And our favorite Omnic in the whole Wild Wild West comes in at number 23. Copying Bastion is one of those copies that you do to surprise the enemy. He is great at what he does, which is producing mass amounts of DPS. And his ultimate is also pretty decent too. But just like with Symmetra, you're only going to get one Bastion ultimate. So if you're looking to copy a Bastion, more than likely you're wanting to surprise the enemy team, but you're also wanting to shred the enemy's double shield. Because you also have to remember that the enemy team is also running a Bastion and probably protecting him. And the only way through is either giving up, and that's really it, because when the enemy team runs a double shield bastion, it's over, man. It's over. <laughs> Brigitte is actually a copied hero that I originally had at number 7. So how did she end up at number 22? Well, first and foremost, her ultimate is the second slowest generating ultimate in the game. But then, just like with a lot of support ultimates, you still have to generate the ultimate if you either want to counter the enemy or if you want to push the enemy. And the thing about Brigitte is that this should be the first ultimate that you use, not an ultimate that you use in the middle of the fight. But that's not even the main reason why it drops to number 22. Because the best part about Brigitte rally ultimate is that when you're done rallying the armor still stays on your teammates but as a Brigida copy as echo once you're done copying Brigida the armor also goes away so the best part about Brigida's ultimate is it even there after the fact 
Duplicating Ana is going to claim the number 21 spot, mainly just because you're only going to get one Nano Boost the entirety of Echo's ultimate. And while Nano Boost is a great ultimate to use, and while copying Ana just as a hero is great for your team because you get sustainability as a healer, you also get an anti grenade that can easily turn the tide of the game. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I can get one Nano Boost or I can get a couple ultimates with other heroes. Plus, you're probably going to be running an Ana on your team to begin with because Ana is the most picked hero in Overwatch. She might be the second or third right behind Reiner. Sorry, but still, she's one of the most picked healers. You probably already have a Nano Boost and have an Ana. You don't need all that sustainability in Nano Boost. Pick someone else for variety's sake. Genji's gonna have a similar fate like Bastion, where you're only gonna get one Dragon Blade per Echo copy. But Dragon Blade is a great ultimate, especially paired with Azaria Grab. So you might be wondering, okay, so why is it so low on the list? Well, it's here mainly because you have to be good with Genji's Dragon Blade. You have to be able to chain dash, and you have to sometimes even be able to know ghost dashing, wall climb. There's a lot of inputs that go into using Genji's Dragon Blade for him to be really effective. All the bronze players are saying, no, all you gotta do is just slice and dice. Yeah, that's why you're in bronze. So if you're good with Genji's Dragon Blade, why wouldn't you just play Genji to begin with? Why are you getting shot by the soldier? Why are you feeding? Go to your Genji, cause the enemy team to have nightmares later on that night with your ghost dashing, and win us the game, bro. Fear was a hero that I was extremely torn on where to put because you can get multiple rocket barrages as Farah, so we check that question off. But then you also have to remember that Farah is really good when she has a pocket mercy. And if you're playing Echo, you probably also have a pocket mercy too. But then you also have to remember that her ultimate makes her very, very, very vulnerable. And two, well, if you're copying Farah as Echo, more than likely the enemy team has hit scans because you are Echo. Why wouldn't they easily kill you as Farah? that's especially gonna be very easy to do if you don't have a mercy but it's also gonna be very hard to do good in the game when you're copying a Farah when you should be playing hit scan why are you wasting your time with echo when we need a soldier or a McCree to shoot the enemy Farah bro Orisa was another very interesting hero to place because Orisa by herself is not a great hero. In fact, she's probably one of the worst tanks right now. And her ultimate is also one of the worst in the game because it's one of the few that can get destroyed. But the reason why Orisa claims the number 18 spot is because of how Echo plays, but her ultimate specifically. Very, very aggressive. And at least for the moment, Orisa's paper napkin shield should be able to do the trick. And if the enemy team is not in a position to destroy your Orisa ultimate, then it could be a decent ultimate for for the moment. Like, I'd rather want Orisa's ultimate than to actually play Orisa. So that's why it's on this list because, well, you get a 400 HP tank, you get a decent shield and a decent ultimate. It's not the worst hero to copy as Echo. Soldier by himself, not considering his ultimate, it's not the best hero to play. Plus, you also gotta think, he's gonna be in the enemy back line, it's gonna be relatively difficult to copy him, plus, even when you do copy him, more than likely, he's gonna shoot you first, and even if you do somehow kill him, you're still in the enemy back line, and when you're done with Soldier, you gotta fly away, it's a very awkward situation. But his ultimate, his ultimate is pretty good. It's way better than McCree's, I'll tell you that. And while there are some counters to Soldier's ultimate, it, it can still get past the D.Va Defense Matrix or Reinhardt's shield, especially if you're in the enemy backline. Soldier, he's just a hit or miss copy. He's not the best, but he's also just not the worst. My favorite girl in all of Overwatch is taking the number 16 spot. Now, originally I even had Mei lower on this list, but then I remember that her ice block actually generates ultimate charge. That's something I forgot to mention with Soldier, but when you're copying Mei as Echo, that generation comes in handy, especially if you're being very aggressive, which you typically are with Echo because you have to get to the enemy to copy them. Getting Mei's ultimate is relatively easy, but once you do get her ultimate, that can at least guarantee you one kill. Plus, if you get it relatively quickly, you can even sometimes get two May ultimates if you're lucky. But another thing that I have yet to mention on this list is that this is one of the few ultimates that even when you're done copying the enemy team as Echo, the effects from the ultimate, in this case the freeze from Snowball, last for a couple of seconds after the duplication is done. While it's not very long, it's still a lasting effect nonetheless.
Batiste takes the middle of our list mainly just because he's a great hero to begin with. He has great healing opportunity, but more importantly, he has the broken OP ability in the form of Immortality Field. And since you do have that 30 second cooldown, you only need one for it to be really, really effective. But don't forget about his ultimate, and while you're probably only going to get one in the whole duration of duplication, it's still beneficial to not only you, but also your team too, to fit that aggressive playstyle. You have to remember that if you're playing Echo, you're probably being aggressive when you do have your ultimate and Baptiste allows for that aggressive push to continue. Now you guys know I hate Doomfist, but I absolutely despise a copy Doomfist all because you can get two Doomfist ultimates in the duration of the Echo copy. Not only that, but when you're flying as Echo and you copy Doomfist, you are in the best position to get the nuttiest seismic slam and uppercut of your life. And at that point, you already have your first Doomfist ultimate. And because you don't have to really charge it, you can just slam down right away. And because you're already in the enemy back line, well, even if you don't kill the enemy, you can seismic slam, uppercut them again, rocket punch them, and you have your second Doomfist ultimate again, and you slam out of the game. It's just, it's just, he's too quick, man. Slow him down. <laughs> Winston's going to be taking the number 13 spot. Now, Winston, in my opinion, is the most ideal tank to copy, but because he is a tank, it's ideal for Echo. Tanks are just a great hero to copy as Echo, mainly just because it benefits everybody. It gives the team protection, especially in the case of Winston. You get that bubble. It keeps that aggressive push playstyle that I keep talking about over and over again. It also gives your heals more chances to get ultimate charge, which benefits them. Winston might be a little bit higher if you can get multiple Winston ultimates, but because you have to wait the full duration of Winston's rage to finish by that time the duplication is already going to be over <laughs> But Winston's best friend Hammond is going to be a spot above him because you can get multiple Hammond ultimates when you do copy him. And while the first Hammond Mines disappear after you cast the second batch of Hammond Mines, still, you're able to just litter the battlefield with so many Hammond Mines. Plus, not to mention the fact that he's a tank, in a beefy tank that is supposed to be in the enemy back line. I'm starting to wonder, why isn't Hammond a lot higher on this list? <laughs> Just barely missing the top 10 is the edgiest boy in Overwatch, Reaper. Now, I like the Reaper copy mainly because you don't die right away when you copy Reaper. And that's something I really haven't been talking about because on paper, you should get at least one or maybe even two ultimates when you copy here as Echo, but in execution, sometimes you don't even get one. But at least in the case of Reaper, you do have Wraith form that could get you out of a sticky situation, but it also reloads your gun, whereas someone like McCree, you have to waste time reloading. That means less time for you to get your ultimate but also on top of that his ultimate is really quick to execute it's just mass damage in a short period of time to where you can even get two reaper ults in one echo duplication Finally getting into the top 10, we have our favorite Omnic Bob, and I guess Ash is here. <laughs> Ash is just a great hero to copy by herself, but when you're trying to get her ultimate, a body shot grants you like, what, 44% ultimate charge? So you get it with relative ease, but then on top of that, you get Bob, which he's just a great initiator ult to begin with, and when you're playing Echo again, you're playing to initiate team fights, be aggressive. But then when you're done copying Ash as Echo, Bob stays around for like one or two seconds. So really, copying Ash isn't the worst DPS to pick, but when you're thinking about copying somebody, tanks are still ideally the heroes to copy. Junkrat's going to be claiming the number 9 spot, but the glaring issue with Junkrat is that you're not playing Junkrat for Junkrat. You're playing for his ultimate, which is why he's a great hero to copy because you get none of the downsides with Junkrat, just all the upsides. But then you start to realize that you're probably only going to get one rip tire per echo duplication. Now, you can get two if you can instantly detonate the first rip tire, which you're probably not going to do. You're probably going to spend maybe anywhere from 5 to maybe even 7 seconds looking for the right target, and at that point, you have to get another rip tire and even if you get a second one even if you activate it once the duplication is done you're done with junk right you don't get to control that rip tire anymore
Why does this man continue to haunt my ranking list? Hanzo claims the number eight spot because you can get so many dragons in the entire duplication process. <laughs> See, unlike Junkrat, you can just toss the Hanzo dragon and then continue to get ultimate charge. And because it's so easy to get ultimate charge because Hanzo is such an easy hero, you already have your second dragon. Hanzo is one of those heroes that when you copy him on paper, you should get a lot of ultimates and an execution. You do get a lot of ultimates because he just he's just such an easier. I hate him so much. This might surprise a lot of you. Seeing Torbjorn number seven? Why? Why? Here's why. When you copy Torbjorn, you throw down your turret. And the turret is accurate 100% of the time. And because you copy Torbjorn as Echo, you generate a lot of ultimate charge. To the point where even if you only do damage with your turret, you're guaranteed at least one Torbjorn jizz. But then, if you do damage as Torbjorn, as the copy Torbjorn, you're basically gonna get Torbjorn's ultimate instantly. But then that's not even the best part once you jizz as Torbjorn for the first time the damage from the lava gives you ultimate charge Granting you another Torbjorn jizz ultimate So yeah, the enemy might move away from the lava pool But all you gotta do is jizz where they move the second time That's why Torbjorn's ultimate and Torbjorn himself is one of the best DPS heroes to copy in Overwatch Not the best but one of the best and most people don't don't even know it. But getting to a little bit more family friendly area in this ranking list is number six, which is Sigma. This is the part of the list where you start to see a lot more tanks because again, Echo loves copying tanks because you get a bigger health pool, meaning that you survive a lot longer, meaning that you're probably gonna get maybe one or maybe even two ultimates with the specific tank that you're copying. And Sigma is no exception. He has a great shield, decent damage, plus his ultimate is just ideal for an aggressive push. And while you're probably not gonna get two Sigma ultimates, it's still a great ultimate to get at the end of the day. Zarya is similar to Sigma where you're copying Zarya because the ultimate. While Zarya is a great tank to play, her ultimate is one of, if not the best ultimate in the game right next to Summer's ultimate. But another great reason to copy Zarya is because you could potentially get two Zarya grabs and while it's gonna be relatively difficult because you gotta think, you gotta bub yourself to get charge and then you gotta be able to do damage to get ultimate charge, you gotta be really, really, really good with Zarya to be able to achieve that. It's still possible and you get two of the best ultimates in the game that is really hard to get get because Zarya has one of the slowest ultimate charge in Overwatch. Plus, not to mention that you also get team bubbles for that aggressive push that Echo oh so loves. <laughs> Well, this is awkward. In the middle of a bunch of tanks, we have the final DPS here that you can copy as Echo, which is Tracer. Tracer is only here because you can get so many Pulse Bombs. She has the slowest ultimate generation in the whole entire game, meaning that you get Pulse Bomb after Pulse Bomb after Pulse Bomb. The whole entire team gets Pulse Bombs. You get a Pulse Bomb, and you get a Pulse Bomb, and you get a Pulse Bomb. On paper, copying Tracer should get you a lot of Pulse Bombs, and in execution, it probably will get you a lot of Pulse Bombs. Plus, it also helps the fact that you're probably gonna be in the enemy back line, which is where Tracer belongs. You do have your recall ability to grant you health and you just get a lot of pulse balls, man That's why she is such a great hero to copy All right, finally getting back to tanks at number three is D.Va. Now, it is possible to get maybe two D.Va bombs while it does take a lot of time to cast the bomb itself. You also have the benefit of being able to squish the enemy team when you do recall your mech, so you also gotta consider that nowadays. But like I say for so many tanks, the fact that you're copying D.Va grants you such a big health pool, 600 health, but 300 of that is armor. So more than likely, even if you're the worst D.Va of all time, you're probably gonna get at least one diva bomb but even if you get d mech you're probably gonna get your mech back instantly because you copy diva as echo which gives you more ultimate generation plus you also gotta remember you squish the abt so you're probably gonna get a diva bomb maybe two if you're a god like diva that's why diva is the third best hero to copy as echo
These two heroes were really hard to choose between them. I chose Reinhardt for the number two spot because of the play style. So if you're copying tank, you get a bigger health pool. That's always great for an echo copy. But something that you typically have to be mindful of is when to be passive when you're playing Reinhardt. When you copy Reinhardt as echo, you don't really have to consider that because you're there to get your ultimate, which can give your team motivation to finally push. If you have an overly passive Reinhardt copying the enemy Reinhardt, which you know they're probably going to have because he's one of the most popular tanks to pick nowadays, you can help open the floodgates for your team because you just have to swing that hammer to get Earth Shatter. But then when you do get Earth Shatter, oh my god, is that one of the best feelings of all time because you're probably going to get another Earth Shatter in that same duplication process because you're going to continue to swing your hammer as Reinhardt. Once again, getting one of the best CC ultimates in the game. But Rhoda takes the number one spot for the best hero to copy as Echo. The biggest reason why Rhoda is the best hero to copy is because even if you suck with not only Echo but also Roadhog, if you take damage and you heal yourself, that gives you ultimate charge. And because you're copying Rhoda as Echo, you basically instantly get your whole hog ultimate. And while casting whole hog does take precious seconds away from your Echo duplication, you're probably gonna be taking damage when you're whole hogging, meaning that you can just Heal yourself right back up again and then get another whole hog. That's why Roadhog is one of the best heroes to copy because he's a tank. He has a somewhat decent ultimate to get because it can allow you cheap kills, but more importantly, CC away from the payload. Plus, his healing ability just grants you so much ultimate charge. It's really just the healing ability. But hot gamer boys and e-girls everywhere, that is my list of the best heroes to copy as Echo. Again, comment down below what hero you love to copy as Echo. Is it someone like Roadhog? because you can just self-heal and get so much ultimate charge getting your ult easily or is it someone like Genji because well you like to play Genji and because you're not playing Genji well you want to feel like you're playing Genji even though you're not just let me know down below but I love you guys thank you guys for watching more watch videos to come and bye